Hi, welcome back to the Keto's YouTube channel. Today we're going to look at how to enable Radius authentication with TP-Link Omata. So first thing we have to do is I'm already logged in here into my site. I'm just going to go to settings. Then we're going to go to authentication and then we're going to create a Radius profile. So in here, we're just going to do create Radius profile. And I already cheated a little bit and uh, already create our easy Radius instance. But if not, it's super easy. I'm going to link the, the video down below and where I go and create it. You, it takes a few minutes in Azure. And once we're up and running, I also cheated a little bit. I already have our policy here set up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go through it real quick. Basically here, the, the policy name, then the IP address where your uh, access points are going to be accessing this. So in here, I already added the IP addresses, a shared secret. Um, and then in here is accept the certificate authority. So if you're gonna use certificate-based authentication for Radius, which is the easiest, even though it sounds kind of hard, uh, you just push the certificate through Intune or whatever MDM you're using, and then it automatically connects. Uh, the other option is you can use username and password either from uh, from Entry ID or from local users that users can come here and set it up. But honestly, certificate-based authentication is the easiest. You just go here if you're using easy CA, add your CA, um, click add and, th and then you're good to go. Uh, the server certificate is automatically managed by, by easy radius. And then you create your access policy. So in here, we're just creating a simple one. We enable password authentication, um, and we're not adding anything else. So any certificate issued by that CA is going to be trusted. We could do something like match enter ID and like match it to a user that is like, I don't know, like in the subject alternate name or something like that. But in here, we're just gonna keep it simple and you can uh, assign a VLAN. In this case, we're not gonna assign a VLAN and you could have different policies. You, you could have one for, let's say your uh, school, you, you have teachers, you have students and, and so on. So once you have set up your policies, you're gonna click save changes and we're gonna go here at the top and we're gonna grab the server IP addresses, these servers are in different availability zones. So uh, I recommend adding all three, but for this video, we're just gonna add one just because I'm lazy. So we just go here and we copy this IP address. And if you need accounting, uh, it just gives you extra information of like how long the session was and everything you can enable it. And I'm just gonna paste the same address. Um, and then we're gonna go here and we're gonna copy the, the password super secure password in your case, use something better. Um, and then we're gonna paste it in here as well. You know, if you were adding all three, you would just add a new one and then add the IP address. I add the password again and so on. Uh, we're gonna click, we're gonna name it and we're gonna call it video radius and we're gonna save it. And then we're gonna go to wireless networks. And I'm just going to create a new one here. Um, let's call it video Wi-Fi. And in here we have to change it to enterprise. Then we select the radius profile and that's it. That's how simple it is to set up radius in TP link. After that, um, you know, it will take a second to, for it to come up here. Um, but once it comes up here, you're going to click connect. And since we're using a certificate, this is where I said you could use your username and password since we enabled passwords, but we're just going to use a certificate and we're connected. So as simple as that, we have enabled certificate-based authentication in TP-Link. Thank you for watching and please let us know if you have any questions.